Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cranfield University. Welcome. 欢迎你. Welcome. Karibu Cranfield. Welcome. <laughs> Namaste. Welcome to Cranfield School of Management. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. From wherever you're dialing in from around the world today, welcome to Cranfield School of Management. My name is Lauren. I'm here to introduce you to our speakers today, as well as field some of the 150 questions that we've already received via email and registrations from all of you today. First, before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. There are a lot of us on the call today, so we will be muted. However, um, this is an interactive session, so we really do encourage you to use the chat. Talk to us, ask us questions. We have a, a small army currently on the chat function for you to answer any questions as well as make sure new questions we can field to the panelists today. The event will be recorded, so if you can't attend the whole thing, and we encourage you to do so, we will be sending it out as well. Any questions we don't get round to, we will also uh, be answering them during so on social media. We've got an hour today. The first half, you'll be hearing from faculty, from students, and of course, our Dean. And then the second half, we'll be answering your questions that you've already submitted and the new ones coming through in the chat. So let's get started. We are incredibly lucky today to have the Professor David Oglethorpe, Pro Vice Chancellor of Cranfield University, and of course, Dean of the School of Management at Cranfield. David is going to be here sharing his insights into what makes Cranfield such a special place to, to be, the student experience on campus, and of course a little bit of insight into what the future may hold for a Cranfield graduate. Thank you so much for joining us today, David. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. And, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody around the world joining us today. It's, a, it's an actual pleasure to, to welcome you to Cranfield, albeit virtually, um, and we look forward to welcoming you in person um, when, you, when you do decide to come to us. I thought it'd be useful if I could give you a bit of background about Cranfield. No, no doubt you'll have done your own research and you'll have looked at the website, you'll have looked at material and so on. But um, it, it's, a, it's a really important, I think, to tell you a bit about the history about Cranfield and to let you know what a unique place it actually is. So Cranfield is actually in its 75th anniversary year. Uh, and has, been, so, and has been running uh, management education right since its, its outset. Cranfield is unique in many ways compared to other universities. It's focused entirely on technology and management. So, and it emerged from um, a college of aeronautics that um, developed uh, engineers uh, and then quickly realized that they needed leadership and management skills and that's where our, our, our Masters in, in Business Administration, our MBA, was started and, and was born. Um, and and that's, that's where the school has evolved from. So we started with an MBA. We have one of the, uh, the longest running MBAs in the country. And from that, we've then grown specialist MSc courses, to which many of you are, are interested in today. The other thing that makes Cranfield unique, um, other than that, that uh, discipline focus of technology and management, is that we're postgraduate and what I call post-experience only. So we have no undergraduates. There's nothing to, to dilute our experience in that regard. And so all of the students are studying for a master's qualification of some sort. Um, the post-experience bit comes in because we also believe in lifelong learning. So although many who might study masters are at the start of their careers, those who study our, our, our MBA, our full-time MBA and our executive MBA are coming in mid-career and perhaps even later on in, in their careers as well. So we really focus on developing people throughout their careers and developing leaders, leadership and, and management skills throughout that. The management school itself also has a considerable amount of executive education, which is non-award bearing, of which you will benefit from uh, our involvement in that simply by our exposure to industry through that. And there'll be lots more of that um, in the next hour uh, for you to hear about. Um, 
I think another thing that makes uh, Cranfield School of Management unique. Um, now, I've, I've worked in other universities in the UK. I also um, serve on accreditation boards across the world. And one thing I've never seen in other universities is the extent to which we partner with, with industrial and other organisations and other academic institutions. So everywhere you look, there are partnerships. Uh, and that means that we bring the students close to industry. We bring them close to, those, to organisational practice. And we help develop the students in, in very much in a, in a working-based uh, context. So I mentioned there that uh, I serve on accreditation bodies throughout the world. And Cranfield School of Management is also um, very special because of its triple accreditation. So there are fewer than 1% of business schools worldwide, and there are tens of thousands of business schools worldwide that hold the triple accreditation. And that's from the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business, the European Quality Improvement System of the European Foundation for, for Management Development, EQUIS, and the Association of MBAs. And in the last two years, we've had re-accreditation on full five-year terms from those. So it is an incredibly special place. There's not many places in the world where you get, get that level of evaluation from external assessors who think that we are really quite special and different. Something perhaps about the campus itself. Um, I think that uh, Cranfield is, is special for many of those reasons that I've just spoken about, but it also has a, an incredibly immersive experience in the way that the campus is organized. So the campus is a living, working campus. It has an airport at the heart of it, and many companies come and, come and spend their time on the campus. They work in our, our executive development spaces, they engage with us, um, they both come to us and we go to them. So the campus is this almost a, a hothouse for learning because you know, it, it is immersed with industry and with students. And we've created what we call the Cranfield community, particularly at, over the last two years, which have been a difficult time for everybody through the pandemic. The power of the Cranfield community has been outstanding, where we brought together our partners, our students, our staff, our faculty, our industrial, industrial partners and other organisations and our alumni all together within this community. Uh, and it, makes, it means that there's, there's lots of contact for the students to, to leverage. The other thing is, uh, and it's a, it's a reflection I think of, of our accreditations, is that we're incredibly internationally connected. So we have um, I think I, I, the way I like to put it is the world comes to us, but we also go out to the world. So we have an incredibly diverse student body. We have a very diverse uh, partnership base across the world, um, both in terms of industry, other uh, third sector organisations, but also academic partners. So we have some very strong partnerships uh, in, in Europe, for example, uh, and we've recently uh, run a very successful event um, uh, with, with Rotterdam School of Management, ESMT Berlin, uh, and Imperial um, College as well. So very well internationally connected, both at home and abroad. Um, the thing that we, we often talk about is, and a word that a lot of students uh, tell us about after they've left, um, is the word tr uh, transformational. And so and we actually have it within our, our mission statement is that our mission is to transform the practice of management. And we really do that. We transform your life. We transform uh, the research that we engage in, trans transforms the management practices that we teach. So we, we do believe in, in attracting people who can transform and will be transformational leaders in the future. Many of the, the products and the teaching um, development that we, we engage in and the courses that you will experience are often co-created with many of those partners that I talked about before and co-designed. So we have relationships, for example, with the, the executive MBA, we run in partnership with Grant Thornton, you know, a major financial services uh, body uh, or company, sorry. Um, we have, a, we have uh, relationships with major marketing agencies in our marketing programs. We have relationships and co-designed courses um, in finance and in economics with, with banks. Um, the, list, the list goes on and on. 
Uh, we have major clients on many of our programs who then come in and help us deliver. And that's that notion of co-design and co-creation. I think within, within all of this, um, this then brings uh, a special student to Cranfield. And I would hope that I'm speaking to many of those special students. In order to take advantage of all of those engagements that we have, the partnerships that we have, the transformational experience that we provide you with, with faculty who have industry engagement, industry experience, and also are active in industry, it requires a special kind of student to be able to leverage that properly and be able to take advantage of all of those experiences to the advantage of their career. So, as I said, we, we may, you may be interested in a master's course where you're, you're at the beginning of your career and you may be interested in a, an executive MBA or the full-time MBA particularly um, where you're coming in mid-career or you know, in the first 10 years of your career. Um, taking advantage of all of those opportunities that we offer will be down to you as much as down to us. So we're looking for a special kind of student to be able to leverage all of that. And when I, when I think about the students that have been through here, that brings me on to probably the last thing I'd like to say, which is around our alumni. So we've been going for 75 years. Our MBA has been, is one of the longest standing in the in the UK and because of that we have grown a huge uh, alumni base an incredibly powerful and effective alumni base that if you come and study with us you will be part of we've actually been ranked for the last two years in a row in the economist which MBA number one in the world for the breadth and potential of our alumni network now that is something to be remarked upon if for any reason other than coming to Cranfield, you will be part of that alumni network. That is an incredibly uh, valuable thing to, be, to, to engage with. We've got tens of thousands of alumni all over the world who will be able to help you, again, once leaving Cranfield, leverage all of your experiences and engage in conversations around your career, engage in conversations about your further professional development and in, engage in conversations about how and experiences of how other alumni having, have taken advantage of that. Today, we actually sit in the Grenville Turner suite um, at, at Cranfield, which is a, a highly professionalized broadcast suite, t TV experience. And this has, been, um, uh, this has been developed as a consequence of a major donation by Grenville Turner, who is an alumni of the, um, of the School of Management and even and sits on the school's advisory board. So there in just in one example, you can see the power, the influence and the value of that alumni network. So it's been great to be able to, to talk to you. I'll, I'll be coming back later on in the Q&A as well. Uh, but I would just say this is a unique place. It is an exciting uh, and hugely um, valuable place to come and study. Both the environment, the faculty, the support that you get is second to none uh, and I really look forward to seeing you uh, when you decide to come. Thanks Lauren. Thank you very much. Absolutely don't go away because David will be coming back. Before we move on to uh, Dr Le Leila Alinegan, um, I just want to actually mention what you were saying about transformation because I think as you gave this example of this amazing studio that we have, it all comes down to that transformative experience that we give people which ties together the connections that we have with business, the amazing alumni connection, the immersive experience that we have on campus where people are able to dedicate time to their professional personal development, which is, is so unique as an opportunity. And the quality of the faculty that we have all adds up to why it is a transformative experience. And, and actually speaking of incredible faculty, one of my favorite statistics that we have here is the fact that we are ranked sixth in the world for the teaching influence of our faculty here. What that actually means is that our faculty are so amazing that business schools around the world are using content, research and expertise and teaching from our own faculty. So I can think of no better introduction to Dr. Leila Allenagan, who is one of the course directors here at Cranfield. Leila is going to be introducing us to the student experience here. Thank you, Lauren. 
Um, so it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and, um, and, and of course, we have a very sort of unique approach uh, to teaching and learning here at Cranfield School of Management, uh, which is really guided by, you know, our philosophy and mission of, you know, um, helping individuals to sort of learn and uh, kind of understand uh, through, you know, transforming knowledge into action, as, as David said. Uh, so, you know, our aim goal really, if you like, is to sort of develop, uh, you know, self-sufficient professionals who have the capacity to develop, grow and redesign their own practices um, over time. Um, and to achieve this, uh, you know, we uh, developed a very unique approach to teaching and learning here at Cranfield um, School of Management. So what I'd like to do is to sort of say a few words about a few practices that we kind of um, adopt and bring to our classrooms you know, for our audience really to sort of understand our philosophy and where we're coming from. But I think more importantly to understand what it feels like to sort of a study at Cranfield School of Management. So, you know, one of the prominent practices that, uh, you know, run through all of our MSc and MBA courses is practice-based learning. Uh, we really believe that your experience uh, and learning is reinforced when you see the real life application of what you learn in classroom. And more importantly, when you apply what you learn into a real life situation. Uh, so for many graduates, the gap between what they learn in class and the reality of job is always a shock. So we try to kind of bring in their real life experience into our classrooms. Uh, so as you can see, there is a spectrum of activities ranging from uh, case teaching, simulations and role plays, uh, you know, competitions and challenges, uh, consulting projects to internship and company based projects. Uh, really to equip you with that practical skills that you need to be able to tackle uh, complex uh, managerial challenges. Uh, and I think in a sense to really prepare you for your demanding managerial roles um, in the future. Uh, you know, in a basic form, as you can see on the left hand side, um, we do um, case teaching. In any module that you do, we do always have a couple of case studies. Um, and these are sort of narrative situations from a real life organization or sometimes fictional cases that really represent a kind of a provocative and unresolved um, open question. Uh, it's a discussion based way of learning where you kind of develop um, critical thinking skills and communication by engaging and thinking about an open ended question, because that's really important. You know, often there's no right or wrong, but you need to be able to kind of critically analyze um, a situation. Uh, we run a number of simulations as part of the curriculum, for example. We really try to kind of replicate that sort of unpredictability and complexity of a real world environment um, because we want you to sort of challenge you to use your critical thinking in the moment. And that's again really important. So we run simulation as part of the project management module as part of leading corporate sustainability where you'd be playing a scenario exploration game to kind of look at multiple pathways to sort of sustainable futures. Um, I run a simulation game as part of the supply chain management module where the students kind of managing um, actively a fashion retail supply chain and they get to sort of develop their strategy at a high level and then they translate it into action um, as they go along. So it really replicates the 24 seven environments that managers kind of experience. Um, so we host a number of guest speakers and you know industry professionals on our courses uh, to kind of share their experience and their perspective of the modern uh, kind of practices um, and you know it's a chance for you to sort of hear from thought leaders uh, about the perspective but also the career experience and there's opportunity for networking as well through those uh, engagements. Uh, so as you can see as we move from the left to the right we sort of increase the kind of the authenticity of the situations in which you'll be placed but also the complexity of the types of problems that you'll be experiencing and as a result we kind of enhance your engagement with industry. For example, a really good example is the consulting projects that you'll engage as part of the course are on MBA and MSc courses. Um, it's a chance for you to kind of conduct a real life consulting project for a real known organization whose executive will be meeting with you. So you'll be playing, you'll be working on your consulting brief uh, for a couple of weeks and you'll be working in a team um, and you learn about sort of the consulting uh, kind of brief uh, you adopt various frameworks that you learn on the module, uh, but also, but also you get to uh, develop innovative, pragmatic, and uh, achievable solutions, which is really important. That's really part of the consulting work. Um, it's really exciting. It's really intense because you get to sort of present back to the client and you receive feedback from the client. But also the experience is really rewarding because. 
um, then sometimes there is opportunity for further engagement with the client. For example, we worked with Ernest and Young in the past where we explored how they can engage the millennial in the workplace. Uh, we worked with Citigroup. <coughs> Last year, we worked with Corn Ferry, for example, on the MSc in management where the student looked at the succession offering uh, and the client's really happy with the student work where they sort of offered uh, to receive the CV book of the students and one of our students managed to kind of secure a full-time employment with Corn Ferry. So there are good opportunities at the back of those consulting projects as well. Um, so the consulting projects also goes beyond the kind of the uh, pr formal curriculum. So there are a number of extra curriculum activities where you can sort of engage. Um, and these are an opportunity for you to really learn about the kind of um, practice of management and work on a real life challenge beyond uh, your cohort and engage with people from other courses, but also beyond the discipline of management. So it's a chance for you to kind of engage with, uh, you know, students from the science and engineering background and work again with a client. So for example, this year our students engaged in the Schneider Go Green Challenge um, and we have a winning um, team at the School of Management who are now um, being nominated as a winner in the UK and Ireland and they are now going to go and compete internationally. Um, over the last four years as well, we had Unilever on campus where they run the Innovation Accelerator Challenge. Um, again, another good opportunity to engage in multidisciplinary teams to kind of work with people across disciplines and work on a real life um, challenge and receive feedback and mentoring from the, from the industry. Um, the ultimate form of practice-based learning for us is where you actually physically place in an organization <laughs> through an internship or company-based uh, project. Uh, we see this really as a continuation of what you learn on the course, um, where you kind of get exposure to the reality of management problem. Uh, but also more and more we see organizations actually see these internships and company-based projects as an excellent talent pipeline because they would want to see you in action for a couple of months before they're actually offering you uh, an employment. So we work with a number of organizations, we work on their problems, uh, we're very much problem-led, we want to be relevant, and as a result we um, identify different project briefs where you can apply and engage in that process um, and receive feedback and, and secure an internship. And I think for me, what's really important is that process in which you engage, you know, uh, the idea of working on your CV, receiving feedback, preparing for the interview is something that would actually prepare you um, and mirrors the kind of the reality of job um, search <coughs> dynamics and help you to sort of build emotional resilience. That's something that's really important to have um, as, uh, as you go along. So I'm sure we're going to talk more on the practice based learning, but I'm really hoping that giving you a bit of flavor into the types of activities that actually support uh, practice-based learning. Um, so the other kind of practice that really informed the design of our courses is co-creational and collaborative uh, learning. So we really believe in you playing an active role in the learning process. So for us, learning is not a one-way knowledge transfer. You will be playing an active role in kind of searching, finding, and assembling knowledge from various sources. So we believe in three fields of knowledge. The first field of knowledge is the knowledge that we bring to the classroom as faculty. Um, so as David mentioned, we do phenomenal driven research. We're trying to kind of address the questions that are relevant for the real world. Um, it's a knowledge that's been accumulated over the years through our research, our engagement with industry, teaching on the executive development courses. <coughs> um, and you might think that's a kind of a conventional body of knowledge that you expect from a higher education institution. But for us, there is an equally important second field of knowledge, and that's the knowledge that you would bring to the classroom. You know, you're all from different ex backgrounds, you've got different experiences. So what we try to do is to kind of provide you with some frameworks and guidelines to be able to access the knowledge that you already have. You often know more than you think, so we want you to be able to access that knowledge. Um, and that's only then that we get to the third body of knowledge, and that is the co-created knowledge that is very unique to each learning experience. Uh, this is a knowledge that's created through, you know, combining conversations and insights from around the room. And that's something that makes me really excited about my job because no two learning experiences are the same. We teach the same subject, but each time we are having totally different conversations. Um, I had a guest speaker last week from Meta Reality Lab, and she ran the session in three different streams. And no two questions were the same. So we've been having, you know, totally different types of questions and reflections and insight um, in each of the sessions. So that's something that we're really passionate about. So we really want to kind of co-create something grand and 
really, you know, for us, um, the hall is really great at the sum of its parts. Um, so we kind of uh, managed to achieve uh, these three bodies of knowledge by kind of some mechanisms, for example, putting you into the different learning teams to kind of work with different people with different backgrounds uh, to sort of um, exchange ideas through debates, shared routine and collaborative activities, but also the design of our lectures such that it kind of uh, enable you to sort of um, access our knowledge, your knowledge, and then together be creating um, a new um, a sort of new insights and, and, and reflections. Um, yeah, so I hope again that kind of given you uh, a bit of background into, um, you know, the extent to which we expect you to kind of participate and uh, play an active part in that sort of learning process. Brilliant, thank you so much Leila. Um, that is a fantastic insight into the Cranfield learning experience and the, the, the brilliance of everyone bringing together their experience and it really is what you make of it. Um, before we move on to the Q&A with uh, the Dean, Leila and our students, we're actually going to go straight to the source for the students because we had lots of questions about the student experience, what happens outside the classroom. So I'm going to introduce you to take a moment from their busy schedules. We have Sienna Im, who is studying her MBA with us, and Luke Wayman from the Masters in Management course. Welcome, guys. Thank you for joining us. My name is Su uh, and my English name is Sienna. Um, I'm studying MBA right now. My background uh, was uh, I worked for the medical device industry for 10 years, and I'm happy to join today. Thank you so much for, for introducing yourself, Sienna. And, and Luke, could you just tell us a tiny bit about yourself, please? Yes, so my name's Luke. I'm studying the Masters in Management course. Before this, I did an undergraduate bachelor's in sport and exercise science. And yeah, happy to answer any questions you might have today. Fantastic, thank you both. And they are both also dialing in from the Grenville Turner studio as well from a different room. Um, so I'd like you guys to cast your minds back to the beginning of your, your education journey when you're looking at courses, whether MBA or MSc. What made you choose Cranfield? So um, the reason why I choose Cranfield MBA is uh, first is program. This program is based on the practical example, practical case study. Um, I think business is based on the example and case study and the pro uh, practical example because if if I only know the theory is not really helpful, um, the business which is changing very fast. So that is number one. And the second thing is strong alumni network. Um, when I reach out to some of alumni to ask some questions about the program as well as the life of the campus, they are they really recommend their life and their program, and they they share their experience how uh, how helpful their their studying is how how helpful how helpful their studying for their career. So that I want to be a part of the alumni. The last one is reputation. Definitely, um, the Cranfield is one of the top five MBA. So I, there is no doubt I choose the MBA Cranfield. Fantastic, thank you. And you're right, it's a cracking course. Um, and, and Luke, why did you choose Cranfield? So like Sienna really, it was, a, it was a pretty academic decision for me. So I was comparing masters in management courses and I determined that Cranfield was the best fit for me. So probably the main reasons for that were, as we've mentioned, the practical emphasis of the course. I didn't want, you know, just another year of purely academia. I wanted something to ease the transition between uni study and, and work. Um, the A couple of things specific to my course for Masters in Management was the Spain trip. We go to Spain for a month to study and also the three month internship. Um, as Leila mentioned, the ability to actually work with a company and put into practice some of the things you've learned. Um, I thought those were great opportunities that I couldn't see offered anywhere else. So that's why I decided to study them in. Absolutely. I think you put that brilliantly as well with purely academia. I think that's one of the things that Cranfield really excels at. It's, it's the real world application and, and business knowledge. Compared to what you expected, how has your experience been so far? 
Oh, that's to Luke, sorry. <laughs> oh, to me again. It's, yes. Yeah, it's been a fantastic experience. Uh, it's exactly what I hoped it would be. Um, I think something I didn't expect was just how diverse Cranfield is as a place. So obviously you have everyone from different disciplines, but also um, from different places as well. I've met so many different people from different countries and that brings a real breadth of you know experience, personality. And I think that's something I wouldn't have got anywhere else. So it's definitely the tightest knit university cohort I've ever been a part of. So that's been really fantastic, really eased the transition into something that, which for me is quite unfamiliar. I've never studied anything like this before. And again, from the course perspective, it's everything I hoped. The, the practical emphasis has, has been mentioned several times is exactly what I wanted, you know, to really be engaged in lectures and not just be sitting there being told things. It's been a really engaging experience from that perspective. And the campus as well. It's a it's a unique campus, but it's got it's got everything you need. So it's been a it's been a lovely place to live for the past six months or so. And on top of all that, you've ended up in a TV studio for the morning. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, Sienna, how has your experience on the MBA been so far? Well, uh, just like Luke said, is uh, every every class has practical example it's based on case study. And also we interact with professor and we share our experience and we learn each other, which is most I like. Um, in, and also in our class, we have a lot of diversity, so we can learn uh, different perspective of each of, each of them. As well as um, there's, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of industry guest speakers. So they came to us with real, um, real case uh, or real problems that share with us. And also we, um, the class based on the, um, their case. And also we interact with each other and communicate, debate, discuss what is best for the company and the problems. So that is really highlight of the, oh, well, that is, that is really highlight of the program. Fantastic, thank you. Um, knowing what you know now, is there anything you both wish you'd known before you joined? So Sienna, if I start with you, what, what do you wish you'd known? Well, I think, well, I think first Tom is quite busy, so it would be better if you can prepare your CV uh, because Cranfield has strong and very good service on the career. So this career team support us at the beginning of the uh, of the class. So if you can prepare your CB before you come here, and that would be really helpful for you to focus on the study as well as your career plan. I think that's a great answer. And we hear it time and time again from our careers service that the earlier you engage, the stronger your experience will be, particularly with the MBA and you have that lifelong careers service. You absolutely should use it as much as possible. Um, Luke, is there anything you wish that people had told you before you joined? Well, I think I wish that I understood the value of doing a master's course, particularly the course I'm doing. I think before I'd started, I thought that what I'd really be getting from this is knowledge specifically. So facts, I'd learn facts about operations and strategy and I'd know more things about business, which would help me in the job, which is obviously true to an extent, that's part of it. But I think a really big part of the course, of the benefit of studying a master's, particularly the master's in management, has been the personality and character development side of things. So in terms of how you work with people, how you deal with, difficult challenges both inside the classroom and in terms of just managing life, balancing so many different things when you're studying a master's. I think that kind of development that you go through as a person is just as important as the things you learn. And I think in terms of moving on from the master's to getting a job, particularly jobs in, in the UK, they're really now looking for what you're like as a person rather than just a list of things you've done and the things you know. What do you like as a person? What do you bring to the table? And I think being at Cranfield has really bridged that gap for me and shaped me into, into what I hope will be a, you know, a useful person to have around in the workplace. That's an absolutely fantastic answer. I do think you should consider a career in marketing or in events <laughs> if, you, if you haven't already decided your career path. Um, 
last question before we move on to the Q&A and we'll bring in Leila and David. Um, you're both on quite different courses. Sienna, you're on the MBA, which is designed for people with more career experience so far. Um, and Luke, you're on the earlier stage of your career looking at the MSCs. So Sienna, if I start with you, if we could just explain a little bit maybe about a highlight of your course so far. You've mentioned the speaker series. Is there anything else you'd add? Um, well, I would say um, we have some concerting project, which is communicate with customer who is who is running their business in the UK or in the Europe. That is quite uh, intensive experience as well as fabulous experience in my course because we can look at their business very deeply and we can discuss what their pro what their challenge they have and based on what we've learned from the past two past two terms um, we can we can uh, leverage our experience leverage our knowledge to uh, for the customer to understand their business better and um, also we learn each other uh, that is group project so um, based on their based on our each our perspective we learn we kind of learn each other so support and support their business to grow up and scale up their business. So I think that is one of highlight the program. Oh, that's fantastic, thank you. And, and Luke, very quickly, what about the highlights from your Masters in Management? I think probably so far the thing I've enjoyed most is just that practical emphasis. I think there's a lot of different areas of business that we have to cover in a short <laughs> space of time, a lot of contract time. And if we were just getting told facts, it would be a very dry experience, but it's the opposite. It's so engaging. I won't go through them all again, but case studies, presentations, the works, it's been, that's been really fun, just learning in that kind of way. And I think probably Spain, it's not happened yet, but we'll go to Spain for a month and I anticipate that that will be the highlight of the course. It'll be a great opportunity. I think you might be right. And we do actually have questions relating to the international opportunities that, that come up, coming up a bit later. So. I'm going to move on now to the main Q&A. Um, we've already got your questions, but do continue to, to share them online. Um, we, will, we will be looking at them. Um, if I start with a question relating to job prospects, because actually that was a question that came up an awful lot in, um, in the question that we pre-received specifically. David, could you tell us a bit about the international reputation of Cranfield School of Management? Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a good question that, um, that we get asked all the time. And it's it, at the heart of that question is actually what, what is the currency of the student's degree that they leave with? And there's sort of two angles to this. One is, is the international accreditations I talked about before, which positions us um, in a technical sense in terms of high, really high quality education. Um, uh, and the rankings, such as you said, you know, the uh, being number six in the world on teaching power, <laughs> which which is it's brilliant. I mean, this means that we're influenced in the practice of other universities to such a huge extent internationally. And so those things, I don't, I'm, you know, I'm it's part of my job to make sure that the students leave with the currency of their degree in that sort of technical aspect of, of accreditation and ranking and so on. But the other thing is that the softer reputational issue, there are many universities around the world, in the UK, where if you explain to someone, an employer, um, that you've got a degree from X university, they'll say, tell me about that, where is that? And uh, what, what was good about that university? If you say you've got a degree from Cranfield University, people raise their eyebrows and they know. Mm, they they know that it's, it, it, it's, um, it, it's it's uh, synonymous with quality, um, and I I mean I you know I go to deans events around the world. I engage in accreditation peer review teams for other schools, and it's as powerful as um, particularly if you if you're with you're meeting with U.S. deans, you know you you can say Harvard, you can say Wharton, you can say Stanford, and you'll get the same reaction with Cranfield. They all know it's a, it's got a global brand and a global reputation. And that that goes with the, the currency of the of the students' degree that the people who leave us. Absolutely. And is the international reputation part of 
why you came to the School of Management. What did attract you to, to become the Dean here? Um, well, I mean, that, that's an interesting question. I mean, so I, for, um, for everyone watching, I, I was previously a Dean at a Russell Group University in the UK. Um, and I was Dean there for, for six years. Um, and I was looking for something better. Uh, and I, I saw, saw the opportunity at Cranfield, and this was an opportunity to, to move up. And I think that's what the students should be looking at, saying, you know, if you've got an opportunity to study at Cranfield, it's an opportunity to move up. Um, and the, the other thing I think that's actually that's important, it might, it might seem technical, but I am dean of the school, so I get to, to help, try and help everyone uh, develop their program, develop their research, um, work, you know, in their working lives and help the students, make sure the students have got all the services they want. But I'm also Pro Vice Chancellor, which means that the, the school has a voice at the university executive level, um, which isn't always the case for, for uh, schools of management and business, where the, where the dean is also the Pro Vice Chancellor and can then therefore influence change right at the, across the university. Um, so that both of those things, but it was the reputation, the um, also, the, you know, the knowledge of it being such a specialist institution, uh, postgraduate and post-experience only. People come to Cranfield to teach and to learn with the students as much as students learn from us. It, it's a fabulous, um, immersive learning environment. It really is immersive. Um, that being said, what do you think the biggest advantage for a student studying here is? Um, it's, it's, um, I think it's along the lines of, of something that Luke said, actually. It's the environment that we create, not just by the campus, but by the, as, as I've said, the, the, the immersion that you get with all of the other students, the, the diversity of, of students, um, the fact that, you know, there's a huge amount of accommodation on the campus. You feel part of the working life of the, of the organisation all the time. And that word I think I used before, this notion of a hothouse. Um, you know, Sienna said, it's hard work when you, when you get here, but it's really rewarding. Um, and I think that that is so different from being on a, uh, at another university, perhaps that's spread across a city uh, that doesn't have that focus. Obviously we, we are, you know, we, we're, um, we're in the middle of Bedfordshire, but we're so accessible to London anyway. You know, Milton Keynes, the fastest growing city in the UK, um, you know, just next door is is only thirty five minutes from London. So, you've got the best of both worlds compared to other universities. This real um, immersive place where you can you can focus your learning and work and, and focus your um, your the environment with other students, but also um, you know get into London at a weekend. Yeah, absolutely. I think what you were saying there reminds me of what, one of the things that the uh, director of admissions for our MBA, Sarah Hatcher often says that, who did the MBA herself, that this immersive experience, this intense one year that you do have, but the combination of the support that you get as well as this dedicated time in this immersive environment is the reason it's this amazing opportunity to, to develop and dedicate time to your own development and a safe space to explore yeah. who you want to be, what type of leader you want to become. And I, I think that is quite unique. I'm going to read out a question verbatim here because it was really well put. Um, and it relates actually to what you were saying about the, the physical location as well as the business connections we've mentioned already. But I'm reading verbatim here. As a student of entrepreneurship, being connected is everything. As, as Cranfield is a campus experience, how can the university help us create meaningful connections compared, compared with a city-based university? Okay, that's, I mean, it sort of brings together two of the things that I spoke about both before and just now. Um, in, a, in a city university, and, and my last role was in a city university, um, the whole university itself is, is often distributed right across the campus and is, is in itself not that well connected. So the fact that we're all based on this single campus and there's nothing in, in amongst that, um, first of all, means that all students are very connected. Luke made the point, and all the academics are very, very connected. But it also, um, it's also a real magnet for entrepreneurs and businesses to come here and use our facilities. So we have, we have the um, the Bettany Centre for Entrepreneurship in in the School of Management. Um, which is 
which is hugely engaged with with particularly small and medium-sized enterprises and businesses who come here. And we have a technology park where many of them are actually housed themselves. So anyone who has that interest in engaging with businesses and entrepreneurs, it's not, you don't necessarily have to go looking for them because they are coming, they do come here. Um, again, I think I'd, I'd also say that I mentioned that we do things in partnership. I mean, we co-design, we co-create. Layla said the same uh, before. Um, those partners are present on campus and those partners are engaged in the delivery of our, of our, our courses. Um, they, may do, they may do part of the lecturing, but they may also provide mentoring and careers advice. Um, that's particularly on, you know, on the MBA and the, the EMBA. And we run a mentoring scheme, particularly on the full-time MBA, where you're, you're directly engaged with alumni who are entrepreneurs. So I've, and I'd say, I say I've, you know, I've evaluated schools across the world. I've never seen anything like this, this closeness to practice, this closeness to business, and the access that you can have um, compared to all, you know, many of our, our peers. Absolutely. That there's an op a lot of opportunity. And I, I think uh, I'm right in thinking that the, one of the recent MBA teams were, won the South European finals for the venture capital Capitalist in venture. Yeah, the, the BCIC, it's <laughs> the, the, the International Venture Capital Competition. Um, we host the North European um, competition, and so we can't engage, we, we're not allowed to enter the North European. So we enter the South European and we won that. And then whoever wins the North European, we go against head to head, and then we, we go against America. And uh, and we've, we've been looking really good for the last couple of years. And the team this year uh, have done a, a great job. And have, uh, we've, so we yet again won the, the, the South European leg. Really love it, yet again. Um, before we move on from this question, actually, I'd like to direct a question to Leila because we did have a few questions about the business connections and what they mean from a thesis. And I was wondering if you could explain a little about what it means at the, the practical programme level. Um, so yes, thanks, Lauren. Um, so obviously, we kind of have a, um, a formal component um, of our MSCs where students would have an opportunity to kind of undertake a major research project um, in form of a thesis. But because of our practical orientation, um, often these kind of uh, thesis uh, research opportunities kind of designed such that they can actually uh, continue the mission and improve the practice of management. So, for example, uh, as part of the MSc in management, we offer internship opportunities where the students, um, you know, do a three month internship between June and August. They are placed in an organization and they engage in a project to sort of solve a real challenge. They get exposure to the reality of uh, management problems. We're very much problem led. We rely on organizations for the problems that they have at the time. It can be around Brexit. It can be around COVID. So I remember at the time when the COVID happened, we were at the start of uh, allocating internships and uh, rather than sort of cancelling internships, we just changed the topics to the topics that were of, of our uh, you know, clients' interest at the time. Uh, the area around remote working, employee engagement, how you improve supply chain resilience, where both supply and demands fluctuating at, at the same time. So uh, we very much engage with organisations to kind of um, formulate the right question, a question that's relevant for them, so that the student can engage in that research project, but at the same time can improve the practice um, of, of, of management. That's the same with our company-based projects. Um, something that we've done, for example, with Unilever Innovation Accelerator Challenge was to sort of give a student the opportunity to uh, apply for the thesis project to continue their engagement with Unilever um, after being shortlisted to do the project, uh, a thesis with, with, within the company. Um, so yes, there's plenty of opportunity to formulate your research question or your research project around a real life problem uh, and as a result, have that sort of engagement with industry. Thanks Leila. You mentioned actually the internships and the external placements. Are they in place for all of our courses? Um, so we do have internships on the MSc management um, as well as the MBA. Uh, for other courses, MSc in logistics and marketing, we frame them as company-based projects. Uh, it means that the students might not be necessarily placed in the organization, but they engage with the organization through you know, visits or you know, arranging uh, catch-ups with a supervisor uh, so that they can sort of deliver the deliverables and, uh, and complete, complete the project. Uh, but for the MSc management, um, and we have this option also on the MBA to some extent, the student can be placed in the organization. 
Um, but we provide you know lots of support for them to you know how to approach an organization if you want to apply for an internship because they also can equally self-source an internship. We offer opportunities uh, on our internal portal, but equally they can self-source it through their own contacts. So we run some workshops for them to know how to approach a contact on LinkedIn, for example, or you know we've got this fantastic alumni community that are extremely supportive because they exactly understand how it feels like uh, searching for an internship and the sort of anxiety around it. So I think we're really relying on, on the support. Absolutely. And you mentioned the MBA inter internship. I understand there are interesting, exciting things to come in future. So watch this space for anyone looking at the MBA. Um, David, a question for you. Does Cranfield offer programs for various, sorry, for people at various stages of their career? We've mentioned the differences between some of the programs. I was wondering if you could explain a little bit about who who should be looking at which course. Yes, I mean the the um, obviously we I mentioned before we I talk about postgraduate and post experience. Um, I mean, obviously, all of our awards are postgraduates, but but the the um, the different courses talk to different audiences. So you you know we, we our our specialist masters programs, our full time specialist masters programs, are are suited pretty much to people who um, have maybe done their undergraduate degree, perhaps had a small career break. Uh, or coming straight from undergraduates uh, and are looking to prepare themselves for their career. Um, the executive MBA and the full-time MBA are though uh, courses that we we expect people to have a certain amount of work experience coming into it. I mean there are there are certain uh, entry requirements around that uh, that you can see on the website but it's it's the notion of what you bring to the course as a post-experience student um, Sienna mentioned it before, you know, she had 10 years experience before coming into the full-time MBA and that would be typical of a Cranfield uh, full-time MBA uh, student. Uh, but you benefit from that, you benefit from the experience that everyone else has had, uh, which can be really quite varied across the, the different career se sections. But then of course we, we also, um, uh, we engage further as, as people's careers develop. Um, I was I was saying to you before that I think many universities view the fact that you could have an intervention in education between eighteen and twenty two, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to last you forty five years. Yes, absolutely. Well, we we just don't believe in that. We believe mm -hmm. that you know there needs to be inter learning interventions throughout your career. Um, so that's sort of what the executive MBA also does. Slightly, often in, uh, int uh, it interests people who are already senior leaders uh, and want to advance even further. Um, but also we have our executive education um, portfolio. So we have programs, open programs that are run on, on really on executive management and so on. And anyone who's studied here as a full-time student uh, who is therefore an alumni gets a discount on all of those as well. So, so we help, we, 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 you know, the whole, our whole teaching mechanism is, is, has evolved to make sure that we're, we're, enhancing people's learning throughout their careers. Always like the sound of an alumni discount. <laughs> um, actually, that event uh, that you mentioned before with RS, uh, Rotterdam School of Management and others, that was part of what they raised on, on there. We had our, one of our amazing professors, Sue Vinicum, talked about the fact that our careers are spanning longer, we're living longer. We shouldn't have expect to achieve everything in our life career goals by the time we hit 25. So it makes sense to give ourselves time to look at our career over time and look at the education, those touch points yeah. in during our executive development to, to build our, our future future leader selves. Yes, well, I mean, that, that was a fantastic event, you know, uh, inter truly international event with with hundreds of people attending. Thousands. It's not thousands, <laughs> thousands of people attending, uh, but focused on, on women in leadership, which was one of our, I mentioned before about how our, our, our academics are actually assembled around what we call thought leadership groups. And it's the thought leadership that, that um, is what is recognized in that teaching power ranking, for example. Uh, and one of our one of our particular areas is around uh, g gender diversity and, and women in leadership and so on. And Sue Vinicum is a, is a, a world authority on that, you know, as as many of our professors are. She absolutely is, and actually in line with that, because we've got this amazing alumni. A lot of them I know are very engaged in in helping pay this forward. So we do have scholarships for the the diversity for women in leadership scholarships. So. 
Um, I'm sure someone on the chat will be pinging links to those shortly. So absolutely, we encourage people to have a look at that. Um, Sienna and Luke, um, if I can go back to you guys as you've had a little pause to rest your voices. We talked a lot about the practical aspects of your course. Could you share a little bit of insight into the student life here in terms of what campus your time on campus looks like? What sort of societies are you part of? Do you go to the pub at lunchtime? These sorts of things. Uh, Luke, if I could start with you. Yeah, so there's a really great student experience here. Um, as you mentioned, there's lots of societies um, that people can be part of, so loads of different sports. You can also, even if you're not particularly good at sport, like me, unfortunately, you can still participate, you know, just recreationally with friends. So I like to do that. Um, part of the gym here. I like to play basketball and badminton there as well in my free time. Probably not the pub at lunch, but <laughs> um, there's the CSA here, which is like a student's union. Um, so they host frequent events and it's a nice place to go for a drink and a catch up with friends on a Friday. Um, other than that, I think I've got to mention the free coffee on tea and coffee on campus, the coffee machines are free. And obviously that in itself is great, but it encourages people to come to the communal areas like the School of Management, in my case, and everyone sits together and socializes or talks about work. Um, so it's a really, it's a really great environment in that respect as well. Absolutely. And next to the, the teas and coffees machines is probably one of my favorite bits of the, of the campus, the School of Management building is there's a piano right in the middle of it all. And I have to say, I really love that. Um, Quite often in the evening there'll be someone playing on it and it feels it sounds cheesy but it feels a little bit like home to me when you hear someone playing the piano so um i i, I do love that environment sienna what about you what about student life here for you um oh adding what looks sad um we have a lot of society in terms of women in leadership consulting club and sustainability club and also save the earth club so you might see there are a lot of opportunity that uh, that leverage your experience on the campus besides of besides from the study, as well as crown, uh, near the crown field, there is a there is a walking path. So if you got a little bit stress of your stress, uh, if you got a little bit stress of your studying, you can go out and walk around campus. There are fabulous uh, natures. And I think that is that is one of my favorite parts of the campus. You're, you're right. It's a very unique place, particularly with its history uh, as an Air Force base. It's, it's very green and it's quite beautiful. Um, I'm aware we're running out of time, so we're not going to have a chance to go through all of the questions. So we will be answering them on social media separately. I've got a couple of questions before we do move on, though. Um, David, if I could direct this one to you, um, what would you say to those who are considering deferring uh, for a year from COVID concerns? It's, it's an interesting one. Obviously, we've had a couple of years where people have not been that certain about whether it's right the right time to study. But um, I think particularly this year, we had a lot of people who decided to defer last year to definitely come. Um, and those who didn't come will feel left behind. Um, and so I would I would say that okay, um, there's there may be good reasons at certain parts of the world for you to be nervous about it, but in terms of your peers, um, your peers will be going to will be going to study. I think the other thing though to say is, and it comes back to this um, the analogy between or the comparison between us and a city university, um, is that uh, throughout the pandemic. There have been some really quite high rates in, in universities that have been uh, based in, in, in cities. One of the great benefits of this campus is that we've been able to preserve the integrity of the campus uh, and really keep our pan our COVID rates down. We have rarely had more than 10 cases in a week mm. um, am amongst students all the way through. You know, in, in weeks in, say, January, 20, 20, January 21, when there were um, hundreds of cases, thousands of cases in other universities. We were really well protected. And so if anyone does have uh, concerns about that, uh, my reassurance is that Cranfield is a very safe place to be. But I, I would say that, and particularly perhaps on things like the full-time MBA, um, when students are going out now to, their, to, to find new jobs and so on, 
they're being viewed as some of the bravest graduates we've ever had. You know, deciding to actually study during COVID is one of the bravest decisions you can take. And um, Sienna mentioned about, you know, putting together your CV. Graduating from Cranfield during a pandemic will be incredibly powerful. It shows huge resilience uh, and focus. And I, I, I just think, uh, I, th I think, you know, it, it shouldn't be something that's deterring people. We have time for maybe one very short question. Um, what does the future hold for Cranfield School of Management? You obviously know what sort of investments are going on here. Anything yeah. to get excited about? Well, as a school of management, as one would hope, we are financially successful. Um, when I came here as well, I laid out a strategy about what I saw the, the future yeah. was. And it was around international, more internationalised, more collaborative, more connected. All of the things that we've talked about, we do well already, but you can always improve on. Uh, and so the future is about investing in that, investing in our partnerships, investing in our facilities and investing in the student experience. Brilliant. Well, thank you so, so much. And thank you, Sienna, Luke, David, Leila. Thank you guys so, so much for your time. I am afraid that is all we've got time for today. Um, so we're going to wrap up now, but anything we haven't answered yet, we will uh, have a look on social. So do continue to send in your questions and keep an eye, subscribe to our LinkedIn and Instagram channels for, for answers to your questions. Um, on the chat, you'll be seeing uh, an invitation to our next Thought Leadership event. That is the Future of Everything series. And this one's going to be with Dr. Rosina Watson, who's gonna be focused this the, focusing this one on sustainability mm. and what the role of the business, how that's going to change um, from a sustainability add-on to being the core part of a reasons, a business's existence. Um, before everyone goes, I would like to say, I, I know there's actually about 200 people on this call who haven't yet made up their minds about which course they want to apply for. So I would encourage you to do is to talk to us. It's a really personal decision about where you study and what, what you want to do and where you want to take your career. So do talk with us. I'd encourage you if you've got more than three years experience, consider maybe something like the full-time MBA, which is a really transformative experience. Um, I know there'll be links going out in the chat. Um, do talk to us, book time to talk with us. Um, thank you again so much to Sienna, Luke, Layla, and Dane, uh, De Dean David Oglethorpe. Thank you so much for dialing in and we look forward to seeing you on campus. <laughs>